Today we have with us Subrato Das. He is co-founder and director of Setu, which is a non-profit theater group in Boston. Setu has produced in the last couple of years two mega plays. One is Mahabharat and the other is Shah Jahan. Now Setu is producing the third mega play, which is being called, or aptly so, Once Upon a Time, Not in Bollywood. Today, we are going to talk with Subrato Das, who is the script writer and director of the play. Subrato, welcome to our studio. And thank you thank very you. much for uh, coming. Thank you for having me. One more thing I want to add before we start our conversation about theater is Subrato also, he has a PhD in uh, artificial intelligence. He is an entrepreneur and worked for major corporations, lived in Europe. Of course, he was born and grew up in India, and now he lives in, in the United States. So, Subrato, before we talk about you, uh, my first question to you is, tell us a little bit about the Once Upon a Time Not in Bollywood. What type of play it is going to be? It's a, it's a serious political play. Um, with some embedded uh, songs and dances uh, from Bollywood. And I tell you why. Uh, the play is all about the moderates uh, of Indian politics because moderates, they struggle all the time. You know, their voice is suppressed by extreme left and right-wing, you know, political activists. Uh, and this play shows uh, the, uh, the lives of, of a few moderates and one of them, particularly is uh, wanted to be in Bollywood but ended up uh, as a moderate in a right-wing political party and that's why he sees his own life event and the life events of others through the eyes of Bollywood songs and dances and that's why the name is uh, Once Upon a Time do we expect not to, in Bollywood. Do we expect to see some Bollywood dances? And yes, uh, you will see some popular songs, a few. Um, and everybody will participate in, in, uh, in dancing. And uh, it's presented in a very different way because it's a very, uh, what we call the nonlinear uh, acts. Uh, it's a collection of nonlinear acts. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experimental. Excellent. It's an experimental Now play. you have a PhD yeah. in artificial intelligence. Sure. And uh, for someone like us, you know, the world of theater and drama and artificial intelligence, they're two different worlds. Right. So what is your connection? How do you connect these two worlds? So am I wrong? You know, uh, as you know a lot about mind uh, and you, you read a lot of literature, you have read a lot of literature on, 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 on the theory of minds and, and you probably know that the, the subject, this AI, um, artificial intelligence and also the, the acting, the theory of acting, they're very interrelated in, this, in the sense that they both, uh, in fact, manipulate mind in the, mm. in, the, in the way we manipulate mind in acting yeah. mm. and in the way we reproduce intelligence or mind in, in artificial intelligence. You know, they are, they're very similar. I find it very intriguing that these two different branches, you know, one is art, one is supposed to be science, yeah. And they are so. So, how, each other. How, how did you get interested in theater? I uh, grew up in a village um, in India. Uh, in in West Bengal. In West Bengal, yeah, uh, it's a remote village. Uh, when I grew up, um, and a village with no running water and electricity, uh, but I was exposed to what you call yatra. Mm. It's a folk theater from Bengal. And it's very popular in villages, uh, at least in my times. Um, so I was exposed to theater, and we used to watch theater. Uh, sorry, I was exposed to yatra, mm -hmm. we call it. It's a folk theater form. And I used to watch those when I was young. Uh, so what, is, what are your first memories of watching that theater in your village? Well, the memories are always like, uh, it used to run, actually, throughout the night. Mm -hmm. So we sit on, a, on, on ground and, and watch, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm those actings under Petromax. Uh, so how, how, how old you were at the time when you I was, that for I first was time, sir? Maybe six, seven, 
you know, and and then throughout my younger days. And then when you so when did you see your first movie in your lifetime? How old you were there? Actually, I I saw my first movie maybe when I was ten or eleven because okay. uh, we didn't have uh, a cinema hall mm-hmm. in our village, so we used to go. To, to, to the town, nearest town, yeah. nearest town. So we used okay. to watch uh, there. So, so you got interested into? Did you act in in childhood in any of the plays at that time? Yes, I did because my brothers were involved in those yatras. They were produced locally, mm-hmm. uh, so I was uh, given a chance. In fact, when I was young, mm-hmm. to play one of the, you know, young kid. So, so yes, I was on stage uh, yeah. when I was young. Yeah. And uh, then you went to study, and uh, how you got into math and science? I went to Kolkata because I studied in the village. I, I finished my school there. And then after that, I went to Kolkata to study my, uh, to do my bachelor's and master's in mathematics mm-hmm. from Kolkata University. And then I did my, uh, uh, what do you call, master of technology from Indian Statistical Institute. Sure. Then I came to Britain. Okay. To do my PhD. And what did you, what did you study in Britain? There you did your, your postdoc or, or doctorate in Doctorate doctor. and postdoctorate. Okay. Uh, and uh, my postdoctorate is from University of London Imperial College. And but how I did long, my PhD in artificial intelligence. And how long did you live in uh, Britain and London? We lived in, um, uh, in Britain for about eight years, four years in Scotland and four years in England. In England, okay. And uh, that's where I met my French wife. Okay. So yeah. tell us about that, how, how that meeting was, and uh, well, uh, how did it change your journey of life? <laughs> Everyone asks okay. that. <laughs> uh, actually, I met my wife in Edinburgh. Uh, mm-hmm. She was an au pair, and she was learning English, and I was doing my PhD in Edinburgh. So uh, we met each other there, and that was back in 1988. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is when our journey started. Mm-hmm. And then we got married in uh, in France, actually, mm-hmm. uh, in 1990. In her parents' home? Or? In her parents' home, okay. yeah. mm-hmm. uh, in 1991. Mm-hmm. And then we, have, we had our first kid in London <laughs> mm-hmm. in 1993. So how many kids do you have? Uh, we have? I have two beautiful kids. Two, in, okay. One is son, uh-huh. uh, who, is in, uh, who is now 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my daughter, Kabitha, mm-hmm. uh, who is 16 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's in Belmont High, mm-hmm. and my son Sebastian is in Boston College. Yeah. So uh, from from uh, from uh, Britain, you moved to France. You lived there for a couple of no, years. No, I actually I, from Britain, I moved to uh, to the United States. United States, okay. 1997. So what brought you here? Uh, that's my job because I really wanted to be um, in the industry in a in a kind of applied research industry. Uh, I did not want to teach, uh, mm. so that. Uh, the scope of that kind of work is much more in the United States. So mm-hmm. I decided to move to the United States. Uh, and then uh, I worked as the chief scientist uh, of a company in Cambridge mm-hmm. for uh, many years, uh, for over 10 years. Then then we went to France mm-hmm. to live there for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So it seems that although you travel from, from uh, West Bengal to, to Europe, to United right. States, and you did all higher studies and everything. Sure. But somehow, the seed of the theater always is still in your mind. Yes. When was the second time it popped up again? And you said, you know, now I want to do something. Well, it has always been in my mind, actually. Uh, when I was in Britain, I was involved in a, in a local community theater group. And then when I moved here, then uh, I was doing some local Bengali plays. Um, and then when uh, then we formed Setu actually in two thousand and three. So which, which year was that? Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. Yeah, mm-hmm. a bunch of us, including uh, Jayanti, mm-hmm. who is now Jayanti Bandopadhyay. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's one of the co-founders, mm-hmm. and she's currently uh, part of Setu as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so her and I and few others, mm-hmm. uh, we formed Setu back in two thousand and three. Mm-hmm. It's a fully non-profit, five hundred one C three organization, mm-hmm. uh, and since then we have staged uh, m- many plays. So how many plays roughly? Put, can you put a number there? Or? Average almost a, one a year. One a year. One a year. We started but with Kamala. Kamala, okay. Kamala, yeah. But your two mega hits in recent years have right. been uh, Mahabharat and, 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 and Shah Jahan. Yeah. Uh, is there going to be anything common between Mahabharat, Shah Jahan and uh, this uh, Once Upon a Time, not in Bollywood? It's an interesting question, actually. Um, first of all, all, each of these three plays have over uh, 25 people in the cast. Okay? 
So that's one common mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, the theme is really uh, political in each of these plays. Mm. So the politics is there. So, no, so that's one common theme. For, for someone like me, uh, sure. like for example, look at Mahabharat, many people sure. look at it as, you know, uh, more epic, spiritual and things sure. like that. And then uh, Shah Jahan is more like historical. Right. So where do you see the politics there? I mean, you know the story of Mahabharata. Sure. I mean, it's all about, really, mm. uh, about fighting over a kingdom and politics, I mm. think. Mm. And, and Shah Jahan, it is politics. It's all about politics because how, uh, in Aurangzeb, politically, you mm. know, maneuvered mm. uh, uh, in his way, uh, maneuvered his way to, to the throne. Yeah? Mm. Uh, he killed us all his brother. And it's, it's fascinating. Yeah? Uh, so how is the politician in your, the latest play? How this politician is different? Or is it the... There is again some commonalities between all these, right, right. Because this particular play is uh, is full of politicians, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. because it's a political play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, but what I wanted to show is, as I said in the beginning of the show, is that um, beginning of the interview that, um, that the play is about the moderates. Mm -hmm. So I show how they struggle within parties, and how they struggle to. Uh, to put forward their moderate agenda. Like India is a very diverse country, mm -hmm. right? And uh, we have people from all religions, uh, you know, different caste. Um, so I think the modern politics, in my opinion, is a very coalition and inclusive politics. It mm -hmm. has to be. Mm -hmm. Because we have to move forward with everyone. And that's what uh, the moderate struggle. That's where the moderates So how, how the moderates, you think, like if you really look uh, at the political systems sure. and, uh, and I think we're talking after camera, you had mentioned that uh, the politics is dominated by the extreme side. Right. They, they, they take over, right. but moderates are a large number of people. Much larger, yeah. So why moderates fail? Because uh, they don't have a voice uh, in the sense that, you know, moderates are moderates, you know, because... Um, when you speak uh, in extreme left or right-wing terms, you know, that go into people's mind very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why they dominate, mm -hmm. at least in terms of conversations. But when it comes to ballot box, in mm -hmm. fact, Indian people are very clever, you know. They choose the right candidate always, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think uh, in Indian political scene, a, a government who is extreme left-wing or left extreme right-wing uh, will survive. Mm -hmm. uh, so eventually the moderates survive. And that is also the message of the play, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so. uh, how many, you said that over 25, 32 people are be playing in this uh, play? And when this play is going to be staged here in Boston? We have about, uh, yeah, close to 30 uh, people, and that includes some dancers as mm -hmm. well. Um, and it will be staged in the first week of June. 2015 mm -hmm. uh, at the Central Square Theatre in Cambridge. Uh, so please, everyone, come and see. Uh, how big is the theatre? How how many people? Can... It has about uh, 175 seats. So we are planning to have six shows. Six shows, okay. So at least for the first run, because it's always the case. Like for Mahabharat, for Sajan, we always had rerun. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. So I'm expecting that, yeah. we are going to have the same because there are so many people are interested, mm -hmm. and we can only accommodate. Thousand mm. in the first round. So, uh, who is the main character in this play? The main character again is a moderate. Yeah. Moderate. Okay. <laughs> who wanted to be in Bollywood in his childhood, mm -hmm. uh, but ended up uh, in a right-wing uh, political party. Now, so, you, but there are other characters who are really equally important. You know, actually, all the characters are important in my opinion because when I, as a director, when I direct, I tell everyone that even if you have a line, or a page, or ten pages of of dialogue, it doesn't matter. If you are in the character, that's where your success is. Yeah. So who is the best actor for you? What is the typical profile of a good actor or actress? It's difficult to describe, but um, it's difficult to quantify. Mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to um, you know, say that this actor is better than that actor because everyone you know, uh, provides uh, some specialities, the good actors at least. Um, to me, when I go to see a movie or a theater, you know, to me, the way the judge, an actor is, is good or, or okay or, mm. or bad, 
is how quickly that particular actor take me to a different world, the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. he or she is trying to create. Mm -hmm. And that's how I judge. So a good actor, I mean, you would, you know, lose your, you know, existence, you know, because they will transport you to a different world. Now, this again brings back to sure. the topic we touched earlier of uh, mind and uh, artificial intelligence. Sure. So, let us talk a little bit more in detail about oh. the, the, the concept of mind, how the mind works on its own with your background in artificial in intelligence, and also the how mind works in, in the mind of an actor. The um, very good questions, actually. We probably need a different discussion, you know, sure. different session. We might discuss. do one time, <laughs> sure, sometime. Yeah, I mean, in AI or artificial intelligence, what we do, we mimic intelligence, mm -hmm. right? So we try to create computers that is, you know, supposed to be as intelligent as a human being, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to know, you know, how the mind works. Mm -hmm. So we do understand, you know, how the memory, how the different connections of neurons, you know, and how, you know, you abstract, you know, your thinking and, and how they manifest into different gestures, yeah. And in a way, acting is, is, is very similar in a way. At least one school of acting which I follow uh, most of the time is called uh, method acting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is where you try to create your own world inside yourself, okay. Uh, so you create your own world and the way you behave, your gestures, your voice projections or your even emotional uh, manifestations, in fact, and there's, those are really the cause of what's going on within your mind, you know, the world you create. So what are, if, yeah. if I, I think you were raising a very interesting point, what will be three or four things an uh, actor yeah. should really pay attention to? Well, I mean, it's always, uh, you know, those, those values, I call it, you know, you're, you have to have, have to have a good projection of your voice. Mm -hmm. And then you have to bring emotions, you know, at the right time, you know, mm -hmm. when you are playing on, on the stage. And then you have to move on the stage very uh, smoothly mm -hmm. in the sense that this is your, your natural movement on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, when you are acting, I mean, the audience is not supposed to be there because that is fourth wall. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, invisible fourth wall. Mm -hmm. So your movement... Uh, should be in such a way as if those that audience is not there. Mm -hmm. So the movement, emotions, you know, projection of your voice, those are important mm -hmm. characteristics. Of now, uh, so Ritha, you, uh, you, of course, were born in Calcutta, which was... I was born in a village, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But I lived in... in nearby in Calcutta, Calcutta right? right? How far away from Calcutta? Yeah, it's so. about 120 kilometers. So that's quite, yeah. quite a distance in India at that time, right? right. So, uh, so you, you were born in that village, right. and then, of course, you lived in Calcutta. You lived in, uh, in Britain. You lived in France. You lived Mumbai. In Mumbai, One year yes. Mumbai, yeah. And then here in the U.S. Right. So you have... And in France, yeah. And in France, yes, right. I did say that. So you have traveled through all these continents and sure. places and all. Is there is still a little bit of your village lives in you, in uh, your mind? It always. I mean, every day I think about it. Mm. Every day. What goes through your mind, like, for example, when you think about your village? I've, I've become very nostalgic, you know, because I, I miss, mm -hmm. I miss every day, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because I love my village, yeah. It's beautiful, by, by the way. Mm -hmm. I so, go with my family, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I go with Janet, my wife, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, go, what we try to go almost every year. Okay, so what is the reaction of your, like, you have a very interesting life that right. not only you were born in that village and grew up there and all over the world, you also have a French wife and... Right and two children who were born in two right. different uh, continents. So when you go with your family, what is the reaction in your village? Well, there is always this uh, bit of curiosity around my wife and children, but mm -hmm. not about me because mm -hmm. they know me very mm -hmm. well. But I think uh, everybody loves because yeah. uh, we know our neighbors, we know most of the people in the village. Mm -hmm. And my father used to be a very well-known figure. So. Sure. Does your wife uh, speak any Bengali or no? She does. No? Yeah. She does a bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about what happens when you go and visit her uh, village in France? It's probably similar, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of curiosity because it's a very remote village in, a, in the region called Burgundy, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the wine-producing region. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there is always uh, this, uh, this bit of 
curiosity because I, I'm probably the first Indian to set foot there. Yeah, yeah could be, yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, and yes. it's, uh, the village is about, um, about uh, 250 kilometers from Paris. From Paris so okay. it's a bit of drive, you know. In, in terms of the hours. size, it's a big size village? No, it's much it's smaller than our village. Much smaller than your yeah, village. It's, it's only 100 people in their village. We, our village have, uh, has about two to three thousand people, so, mm -hmm. so that's, that's a difference. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Now, uh, coming back to theater again, sure. uh, I do remember that you had mentioned to us, uh, I think last year or early this year, that you wanted to do one of your plays in, uh, in New York. Right. And uh, what happened? Does, do you still plan to do that? Or? Yes, uh, we almost went with mm -hmm. Shah Jahan, yeah. and, and we have uh, a couple of offers on the table, so mm -hmm. we're still thinking about it. But it's a big commitment, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, uh, you know, if you ask me what's your vision, uh, my vision is to take uh, one of the Indian plays mm -hmm. uh, in Broadway. Yeah. Broadway, sure, yeah. And that would have been a good start because it was an off-Broadway venue. Mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't work out. But we are, we will go at some point. Mm -hmm. you know? And also the language of all the Situ plays in right. English. So in that's English, also yeah. a big... Uh, right. Uh, advantage where people come. Have you ever made any effort to to outreach? Like you know, Sajan would have been a wonderful opportunity to to outreach to non-Indians. So you you know, have you tried to? Yeah, actually. Because uh, if you look at the Shetu's audience, in fact, almost a quarter, more than a quarter of the audience are really Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so we do reach out to uh, mm -hmm. to non-Indians. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, in fact, that is our goal. Uh, mm -hmm. Setu uh, means uh, bridge in, in several Indian languages, sure, as you sure, know. Sure. So we try to bridge the cultural gap mm -hmm. between India and the Western society. Mm -hmm. And English has to be mm -hmm. our language. So when, when you and Jayanti found Setu, right. what was in your mind that what, you know, what Setu should be doing? You know, what was your vision? And do you think that you were reaching in that direction, you have already reached that direction? No, we are, it's, it's an ongoing process because it's a big country. You know, we, we only do plays once once a um, once a year, once or twice a year, yeah. So um, so it's a it's an ongoing process. But hopefully, um, uh, our objective is to run one of these productions for a month, over a month, so that um, we will be able to expose uh, to many more. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to expose the Indian culture to many more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you know, it's hard because it's an amateur community theater group, and everyone has their uh, day job. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's difficult. Yeah. So what what is the reaction of uh, when you know the actors and actresses that you know? You, I'm sure a lot of people must be approaching you to sure. to act in this play. Sure, sure. And uh, what is your uh, acceptance or rejection uh, proportion? I mean, in this particular play, if you consider uh, once upon a time not in Bollywood, actually there were many who were interested. At least sixty. Uh, Mm -hmm. People auditioned. Mm -hmm. Sixty people. Yeah, for twenty or so characters. You know. mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so we had to somehow, you know, select. I, I see a lot of things. In fact, I see your passion. Mm -hmm. Not only the acting skills, but mm -hmm. that's I mm -hmm. can always teach, uh, mm -hmm. and I do teach a lot. Uh, but what is important to me is really your passion mm -hmm. that you are dedicated, mm -hmm. and whatever you are given, you execute that. You know, with passion, so that's pretty. And for important. that, call for commitment. You know, right. time and all those things. Commitment. So, how many, for example, rehearsals you will have before the uh, this Bollywood play is staged? So we just had our first practice uh, this uh, last Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll have practice almost every Sunday, uh, barring a few, mm -hmm. uh, and then one full practice mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm. And not that every actor comes every Sunday. Will you know? Probably they will come every other week. Mm -hmm. So you know the, the the practice continues until the end of May, mm -hmm. and it's fun actually. That's mm -hmm. one yeah, aspect we enjoy mm -hmm. really uh, to get together. But then again, we are serious as well. You know, mm -hmm. a typical rehearsal is attended by how many roughly? For example, in this this play, the last one, uh, the one on Sunday, uh, there were. Uh, you know, close to 25 people. So mm -hmm. when there will be a full rehearsal, everyone will be there. Mm -hmm. So that will be close to 32, 33 So what is people. the age of the 
the the oldest actor or actresses and the youngest one in this play i think i'm a, i'm one of the oldest the youngest uh, yeah. we have very young uh, participants actually mm. they are in their teens you know like 13 14 yeah. mm -hmm. and we also have couple who are a little older than i am mm -hmm. but i'm one of the oldest actually mm -hmm. and but most are like in their 20s 30s you know mm -hmm. So now also uh, so you uh, you are an entrepreneur you have your own sure. company when you started that I started uh, back in uh, 2011 when I because we lived in France for two years and mm -hmm. when I came back mm -hmm. I decided to have on my own and your company is based in Cambridge uh, yes Cambridge okay. so I was working for Xerox in in France and then I decided okay that's it mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a try something mm -hmm. to do on my own mm -hmm. excellent so, And uh, you, are your kids also interested in theater, or they have their own? I don't know. My son is a Sebastian. He's a great soccer player. He's a varsity. He, he plays at a very high level. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, I think, she's more in art. Okay. She's a very good artist. Mm -hmm. uh, But ha has any one of them played in any one of your plays or not? Actually, Kavita played. Mm -hmm. In uh, she was one of the, you know, two youngest brother, Nakul. Mm -hmm. In Mahabharat. In Mahabharat, right? Yeah, okay. So her and her friend, actually, I met them. Although she's a girl, but mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. converted them to a young boy. Mm -hmm. uh, what about your wife? Has she played acted or? No, she is. She 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 has not. But uh, she will be in out now. Actually, she will be. Um, she will be acting as a, as an ambassador mm -hmm. because there's there's a there's a role for a couple of ambassadors. Okay, in, in this Bollywood play. In right? this Bollywood play, mm -hmm. uh, she's she would be one of the ambassadors. She's the French ambassador, actually. Oh, excellent, excellent. Uh, and there is another person who is also, uh, mm -hmm. you know, foreign origin, mm -hmm. so he will be another ambassador. Mm -hmm. So, who are the couple of other key players in this production of this play? We we have everyone. Everyone players, is yeah. everyone, everyone is a key. Yeah. Okay. So, if you look at Shah Jahan, most of the cast uh, in Shah Jahan are also in. in the yeah sai how was absolutely wonderful that oh, one i you. saw that was absolutely you know amazing uh, but every year we give um, opportunity to some newcomers mm -hmm. so we have about about 10 newcomers this in this, this one in this one yeah mm -hmm. and in terms of a uh, uh, male female versus what percentage is the male cast and what is the female i think perhaps uh, two third would be female mm -hmm. so one third female, female yeah Is any particular region, or that's how the theme dictated? That's how the theme dictated, and also I think because we have a bunch of dance sequences, so mm -hmm. I think um, yeah. that's where. And if you look at um, the demography of our uh, of our members, you know we have about one hundred and fifteen, one hundred and fifteen members in in the Sethu group. In the Sethu group, so mm -hmm. most actually more than. Seventy-five or eighty mm -hmm. are women. So, what is the next for Sethu? If you look for the next five years, I thought I already answered. Like I want to take the <laughs> take Setu to Broadway. Okay. No, but apart from that, like is there, you want to do it some sort of a more plays or you yeah. know just one or two year. We'll continue uh, picking up plays that are you know thought provoking, mm -hmm. uh, and because we are not an activist organization, but we portray uh, the social context, you know, mm -hmm. both good and bad of India. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you? Do you have any plan to do something with uh, Indian Americans here in the U.S.? We'll see. I'm, I'm not very keen on that. Not very keen, but but you never know. You know, if the situation dictates, mm -hmm. and if you see a lot of, you know, second generation, mm -hmm. you know, Indian Americans are interested, then I'm so now now you might you, write you, something. You mentioned earlier that you had about sixty auditions to get about thirty right. people to act in this uh, Bollywood play. uh and of course there must be a lot of them from this first generation uh, indians here in the indian in, in right. the united states most actually what 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 do you think about their acting interest and all that, you know you mean our kids okay yeah exactly. that that'll be yeah exactly okay um uh, i think we have a few we mm -hmm. have quite a few actually we have four of at least five mm -hmm. who are at least part of our um part of our list uh, part of our members mm -hmm. and i i think they're very keen on learning indian culture mm -hmm. and and even uh, i speak you know people of second generation or generation next to us mm -hmm. uh, you know outside our group and i i feel they're very keen on learning indian culture 
Of course, you have been involved in theater, you know, from childhood at least sure. you have seen and watched and played. Uh, how important is theater for overall for the society and the community? Theater is a, I thought it's a very effective medium in terms of propagating your message, I thought. It's a very, very powerful medium. And it has a tremendous effect uh, on the society. Um, I think more than, I would say, any other medium. Uh, how do you compare theater with movies, for example? I mean, I mean, of course, everybody, every medium has its own place. Right, right. But uh, if you have to look at, say, the the movies and the, and the theater, uh, what is the advantage and disadvantage in both? I mean, I like I like both, but I obviously have been involved in in on stage product in stage productions, so, so I have not been involved in movies. Yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, although I'm trying to get into, mm -hmm. have you have you any plans for to? to yes, uh, I actually I'm directing a couple of short plays. So, mm -hmm. so uh, to be filmed. Not the short plays. Sorry, a couple of short movies. Movies. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How how how? Actually, I have noticed also lately that you know as I follow this uh, industry, that there is suddenly you know an upsurge of uh, these short films everywhere you go and everybody says, oh, I'm making a short film. I'm doing right. a short film. What is behind that? I think it's a it's a good way to start mm -hmm. for anyone, I guess, and then also um, you know, there are documentaries. There are, um, those are short, yeah. Like uh, and then uh, you can say the story in a very precise and crisp manner in a very short film. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure there is a craze, yeah, but mm -hmm. it has always been there. Yeah, yeah okay. Good. So I'm I'm starting with with a couple of short films. So I have lined up and when they will be ready. Any idea? Sometime next year. Next year. So I have the scripts ready and, and then I have... So when you say start film, how, how many minutes? It will be about 12 to 15 minutes each. Each. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, so, Ritu, I have one more question for you. Sure. That since the beginning of human beings on this planet, theater has been always part. Always people have acted, people always have done, knowingly or unknowingly. It has been very basic part of our human psyche. And uh, now we have television, we have movie, movies, we have so many other shows and plays. In this context, in a new 21st century, how do you look at the future of theatre? Actually, it's a very, very good question. Uh, and as you know that when the television came, you know, people were worried about the future of cinema. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But it, ex you know, it exists still today, mm -hmm. right? In a, in a big way, actually. And and people will have been saying the same thing about theater, but if you look at uh, carefully, like it's really gaining popularity, mm -hmm. theater, and it will always be there because it's live. You mm -hmm. know, that is what uh, television or cinema cannot offer. Mm -hmm. And the message that you propagate through theater are much more effective than mm -hmm. than cinema because you are watching live something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think. Uh, anything uh, can take, uh, take away from, from that kind of performing medium. Uh, so theater will always be there. So what has been your personal experience? Like, you know, you go and I'm sure that you must be watching a lot of uh, theater sure. and shows like I that. And, and then you watch a movie. What, what, what really evokes more emotions in you? I like both, actually. I like mm -hmm. watching movies. I like watching theater, you know. I like go to theaters, yeah. So I go there regularly. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's two different things, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, there's a lot more you can do in, in, in movies. You can bring in, you know, the, the appropriate scenes. You can change, you know, the focus from one place to another place, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in an instant of time. And there's a lot of constraints in a, on, on stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but stage, what you see, as I said, is is, you know, the real people are acting there. Now, so it's uh, very different. Now tell us, uh, I'm going to change the topic here. Yeah, sure. Uh, someone who doesn't know you, who is Subrata Das? What goes in his mind? I'm just someone who is trying to balance between my very serious hobby, which is theater, mm -hmm. <laughs> and my own personal Work. life. And then I have beautiful family. Mm -hmm. So I try to balance my work 
which is all related to you know artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then I have beautiful family, uh, and then I have my serious, very serious passion, uh, which is the theater. Yeah. So what? How how you would be without theater? I I will survive, but I like I like because I meet a lot of people. I meet a lot of young people that mm -hmm. keep me young, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's 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 a fun it's a fun experience. And I, in fact, um, I meet people from all over India. You know, I get to know them much deeper, and I love talking with them. Any, uh, so. you know, what you think is that your biggest strength is as a, as a human being, as an individual? I I think I'm a very Practical because if I have a vision, I try to realize it, mm -hmm. um, and it's very important whether you are running a company because you know it's not that you can just think; you have to make it a product and sell it. Maybe it's a very research product, you know. and similarly in theater, you envision something. Uh, you know, for example, I write the script and then. I create all the characters and then I put people in in those characters and then I bring them on stage then eventually people see it. So it's a kind of process from the beginning to the end. So that yeah, the process starts with a vision and then you realize when uh, you know it comes alive on stage. So, and, uh, so I'm a very practical person, I think. Uh, so that's your strength. I think no, that's what, what I must say. Whatever I envision, I try to see it yeah. happen. Yeah. What about your weakness? like? This is the one thing I cannot handle. I can't say no to people. <laughs> okay. It's very difficult. That for can me. be a very bad habit too, you know. Right. <laughs> it's very difficult for me to say no to, mm -hmm. to anyone actually. Anything you have learned from, from, uh, from acting and theater right. which you use in your personal life? Yes, I do. I do. Like give us an example. I don't know. It makes me humble though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, because you are dealing with things. Also, I, I, it's, a, it's the management aspect. I learn a lot. Mm -hmm. See, you you deal with, a, for example, 30 actors, you know, they all have different mm -hmm. ways of thinking. So that's, I think, a... So what is the biggest challenge in dealing with 32 actors who all have their own egos and... Yeah, fortunately, uh, you know, the people we have in our group, they're very fun-loving people. You, mm -hmm. uh, you do get, you know, a few instances here and there, you know, uh, that leave, you know, bad feelings to people's mind, but most cases, most of the time, you know, we are very fun-loving group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. So, Ruto, thank you very much for coming to our studio and looking forward to your play and all the best for that. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. really happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you.